mid-century modern building up on uh, Club Circle. Miracle Manor. Now, Miracle Manor, same name, but completely revived. Mona Lisa. Notice, nothing around it. It's now Sagewater. Number one on TripAdvisor for our town, by the way, right now. Sagewater. Beautiful mid-century modern and great decor that the, that the girls that own it have done. The Moors. Look at nothing around the Moors. Back in the day, kind of a mess. And it's now the spring with a beautiful front door. They are probably the busiest small hotel in town. And then there's my little place, the Kismet Lodge. Notice nothing in the background, small palm trees. And that's back in the day. We didn't have the, notice here there's, they, they had a little shelter around the spa. Here there was no shelter. You can tell this is an older picture because the palm trees have gotten bigger down in the bottom picture. And here's the pan pan in the background. That was their little sign. Um, here's what it was like when I bought it. Oh. Isn't that yummy? <laughs> Let's go. Let's go in the water. Um, <clears throat> rumor has it, and I haven't yet substantiated it, but I think it's valid that there were the walls of my place had different colors because a movie, I, and we don't know if it was high school or college kids, uh, paid the then owner, I don't know, I think they say, we'll paint your place if you let us film here. So they painted these multicolor walls. And if anybody knows or if anybody hears about an old movie being filmed in Desert Hot Springs at the Kismet Lodge, I'd like to know about it. But anyway, <laughs> that's the yumminess of what we found. And now here we are. The palm trees are larger. We have cleaned it up just a little bit. Um, as Audrey said, I didn't know you were going to give me that introduction. Where's Audrey? I'm here. Oh, you're over there. Um, we've been fortunate. The harder we work, the luckier we get. We've been uh, featured by many people over the 14 years. So here's our spot now. Look at those palm trees. You can't even see how tall they are. And yes, those are naked people, but you can't see anything. <laughs> We participated in the American Association for Nude Recreation Skinny Dip Day. More of the big palm trees and sort of the cool views from our place. So now, what makes the spas of Desert Hot Springs unique today? Well, we offer a very personalized experience. When you own a place, you get to interface and get to know your guests. And, you know, Two Bunch isn't the only place that gets famous people, let me tell you. <laughs> Our little hideouts, and I can't confirm nor deny, but when the Obamas come to town... <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, um, we all, the little spas, because we're so private and we're so insulated from the outside world, we have attracted some very cool people. Um, and they become, like in Judy and I's case, very good friends. Many of our small spas offer a free afternoon social hour where we sit in the water with our guests and enjoy wine and cheese. And we get to care for and minister, serve our guests. And um, I like to joke, it's the largest congregation I've ever had. We've had over 12,000 souls through our doors, not counting repeat. And often, um, and I don't want to get uh, too goofy on you, but awareness happens in the lives of people. And they'll have aha moments where they'll come off a massage table and they'll say, I now know what I have to do. And we haven't said a word. We have a gal here who has a testimony about soaking in our lithium waters. I've posted before about my struggles with psoriatic arthritis and psoriasis and my continuous hunt for effective, non-life-threatening and cost-effective remedies. My skin, my joints, my brain function always improve when I soak in the minerals waters with an elevated level of natural lithium. Although there are fewer studies that I would like, they indicate similar findings. But this last experience was remarkable. 
Sometimes the arthritis, arthritis attacks my fingers under my nails and this causes swelling resulting in acute pain that feels like a splinter under the nail. Yes, ouch. When it's the last time, I tried different things and soaked it in Epsom waters and spas and nothing was helping much until I got the Living Waters fully optional spa and desert hot springs. Within 30 minutes of entering the warm pools, my pain was gone. It did return after four to five hours of being out of the water, but it was less acute. After five days of soaking, it was pretty much gone except for touch tenderness. This wasn't the first time I'd experienced this, but it was more profound and obvious relief. I can't help but wonder why it hasn't been studied more. So much of the research I've seen thus far is incredibly promising. Now, before I go to this slide, and I forgot I should not have clicked it, we know that back in the day, a lot of the mineral water spas sold the water for many reasons, or they sold the public on, you come, you're going to cure, get cured. But the lithium and the high pH do have scientific nexus today, especially the higher pH, for boosting the immune system. And these are things that matter. And anecdotally, I just shared that a, a, a case with you. We've had numerous people come with psoriasis. And after four or five days, their psoriasis clears up. It's pretty amazing. All right, October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. I'm going to ask the ladies, could I have a show of hands if you, have, if you are a breast cancer survivor? Raise your hands, please. One, two, three, four. Anyone else? One in eight or one in nine, depending on where you're at in this country. This is my honey, 38 years old. We were going to move to Monterey, and she was diagnosed with breast cancer. And of course, that's her today. We share life at our, in our, at our small boutique spas. Back in 2002, she was diagnosed with breast cancer. Uh, thank you. Uh, that is a typo right there, 92. That medical crisis changed our lives, friends. It changed our lives. We'd be glad to tell you the story anytime you want to know. But Judy's been able to share that and her story with over 12,000 visitors to our spa. And yes, because we're clothing optional, they can actually see what reconstruction is all about. You know, there's no shame in body acceptance. The shame is not accepting the body. She has been able to provide support and counsel to other women who have been diagnosed. She's gone through it with them, and we've sadly gone through people that have passed away. Here's the inside story of all the power of our spas. People come from all over the country, and it creates something called revenue for our city. Tourists pay a 12% transient occupancy tax. This year, that translates to about 1.6 million. It goes straight to the city coffers. Then there's what I call the TTDI, the Tourist Trickle Down Impact of this money. Most of the interested analysts put the impact at close to a dollar for dollar. In other words, my weekend rate for a room is 189. More than likely, they're going to go out and they're going to spend money on goods and services. Maybe they'll buy things. They're just they're vacationing. That's what you do. Think of the last time you went away and you spent money. And then ninety-nine dollars for food. It really maps. We were just in Newport Beach for a few days, and I did the math every day. It was about one for one. At our spa, and I'm pretty sure this is true with all the boutique spas in our town, we try to keep people in DHS. So, in addition to the TOT that they pay, each spa hotel has to hire employees. Each employee has expenses, pays taxes, and if they live in DHS, the city benefits. And the hotel spa guests cause the hotels to have more utility costs. And yes, DHS has a utility tax. By the way, yes on B and C. <laughs> Not to get political, but this is more than political. This is the life of our town. <laughs> yeah, signs are available. Get a big one. <laughs> yes. And this utility tax is boosted by the presence of tourists. You know, if, some, if nobody's at the spa, then my utility rates are low. 
But if somebody's at my spa, my rates are up, and guess what? The utility tax is up, and guess what? We pay it. Both the hotels and businesses, and other businesses in DHS. Okay, now what's more insider information to this? Yes. Tourists do not share the same view of, the de of Desert Hot Springs as the people of the Coachella Valley. Yeah. You know, if you tell somebody you're from Desert Hot Springs, oh, Desert Hot Springs. Of course, now it could be, oh, Desert Pop Springs. But <laughs> a little you know, bit better. But, that, that, that would be a little bit. <laughs> but the tourists don't share this view. They don't. They're flying in from all over the place, staying at our spas, and they associate the whole valley with the term Palm Springs. But it's true. I know, it's true. And we have to embrace it. Um, our mineral water spas present the, present the city in a positive way. We are a funky little desert town that has not been all L.A. of five like Palm Springs. We are, we are. We're proud. I'm damn proud of it. When I got elected to the Water District Board and then we hit that great, great uh, water shortage, I mean crisis, our little district, we could hold our head high that we didn't have all this turf everywhere. And we had this, you know, we're just still a funky little desert town. And uh, we can have great pride in what we are, the desert scape, the natural desert scape. And our hotels demonstrate that DHS is a great place to be. When people check into my hotel, I like to tell them, welcome to Living Water Spa, and here's a map of our town. Here's our favorite restaurants listed. And by the way, we're just a funky little desert town. We haven't been all LA if I like Palm Springs. And I flipped the map over, and there's the whole valley. I said, you like to go to where all the tourism stuff is. Here's Palm Springs. But if you want good food, great portions, great prices, right here in our town, you're going to find it. And by the way, the whole valley is known for tourism. Therefore, leave nothing valuable visible in your car so that it's safe in your room, so wherever you travel in the Coachella Valley, it's safe here. I don't say a bad word. I don't say anything but the facts. Here we are, a wonderful little cool desert town. <coughs> now, as we get towards the end of my little presentation here, I thought it would be fun to show you that we had some of our spas in the movies or on TV. <coughs> so you can get uh, Audrey's book, Celebrities in Hiding, and you can learn tons about things. But uh, some of the big, the big movies, The Three Women by Robert Altman from 1977, uh, it showed Coffee Spa. Then The Player, again by Robert Altman, he had this thing about Desert Hot Springs uh, in 1992 showed two bunch bombs. Then there was a cool TV series. Did you ever hear of this? Hot Springs Hotel. It was a late night showtime affair from 97. Now I'll remember everybody gets it when I say that. From 97 to 98. And it featured Miracle Springs. But it wasn't Miracle Springs yet. The Big Birds hadn't acquired it yet and it was in that period right before. So now, here's some pictures of stills from Robert Altman's Three Women. This is inside of Coffees, and there's Sissy Spacek and uh, Duval. What's her first name? Shelly. Yeah, thank you. Shelly. Shelly Duval. Check it out. You've got a very concrete, this was a, a sturdily built place. That's why it took so long to tear down. And their pools were very, very clinical. Coffee believed that the water had health purpose, uh, properties, and, and I believe it does too. And so they had people, they would walk them in the water, and of course, at least in the movie, they did. People hanging out. Again, very clinical. And uh, some have said that when Desert Hot Springs Spa, which is just north of what was Coffee's, when it was built, it was Hip, happening, mid-century modern style, and it just and and it had rooms because coffees had no rooms, 
it was the death knell for coffee spot. And there they are walking down. Look at these interesting little bathtubby areas. And there she is. I don't know if I want her working on me. I, it's just, it's just a look of mischievousness there. So here's a clip from the player. Oh, 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 oh. Wrong way.
with their TOT, with the, with the tourists that come, it has been the constant, the constant. Um, but there is more. Spa ownership is not for the faint of heart. You know, coffee lost his spa on fire. He rebuilt it bigger, better than ever. Today the challenges of the hoteliers are as follows. The internet is the source for our business, but it's also the source of criticism. Mm -hmm. TripAdvisor, Yelp, the reviews can be brutal. Sometimes we deserve it. Other times we go, they were never at our place. Why are they saying what they're saying? So you have the good, you have the bad, but we have to face it. But it's not for the faint of heart. Not at all. Uh, you can ask Judy if I'm telling the truth. I'll get all panicky because no, the phone is not ringing. No one's booking. And then a couple days pass. The phone's ringing off the hook. Man, I'm so busy, dang it. <laughs> <laughs> Feast or fan. Also, we should not take our water nor its history for granted. One of the reasons I ran for the Water District Board back in uh, 09 and 08 is that uh, I wanted to get, help the district get more sewers in. And uh, right now, we're 75% of our town are on sewers. And, you know, sometimes we go, oh, we don't need sewers. Yeah, we need sewers. We have to protect our groundwater. Without the groundwater, we're stuck. Lastly, do it now. Follow your dreams. This life is not a dress rehearsal. It's been said you only live once, but it could be better phrased you only die once. You live every day. So my suggestion to you is make the most of your day. Yeah. And yes, join the historical society. It helps preserve the history and document our history. And our website is our DHSHistoricalSociety.com. And I have no trouble entertaining any questions if we have the time. Questions or comments? Yes, I see that hand. Waving out there. I think it's really a shame that with all the coffee, we don't have a single street named coffee. And you could be eight streets because it's just a number 